almost done no television at all that I know of, particularly live television, yet he is considered by many uh, as one of the most influential figures in the rock star spectrum today. That's true. His albums are certified gold almost before they're shipped. Maybe even before they're cut. There's I would say, yes. But his first musical efforts went unnoticed until he appeared on stage like this. Did you feel that? No, they'll catch on. Okay. Oh, really? Well, I think there are a lot of them there. There are a lot of them right there. But today we're going to get a glimpse of the real man behind those pictures. Please welcome the incredible David Bowie. Oh. Something to help me Won't someone take off to me There's always some change in the weather This time I know we could get it together If you would stay here tonight That would be crazy tonight hey, That's what I meant to say or do something Never say you stay this time. I really miss you so bad. He has time. Cause you can never really tell when somebody wants something you want to.
ask you something. What does it feel like when you finish a number like that and you hear those screams? That's got to be something else. Oh, it's my drummer. Oh, he did it? Yeah. Oh, and he's gone. What a shame. Yes. No, I mean, you didn't have anything to do with it? The, the boy singer had nothing to do? <laughs> yes, of course I did. No, how do you feel after, the, after a moment like that? Um... You give so much of yourself. But n no, not really. I, I, every time I think that I should do it again. Do you? Yes. I think we all do. I never, uh... Hello. Hello. Excuse me. <laughs> there, are, there are so many David Bowies. I, in the opening of the show, I showed some photographs. Yeah. Uh, rather bizarre photographs, some of them. And I don't know how much of them were uh, doctored up with electronic lighting and that. Yeah. Have you got those photographs? Can I see them again? Yeah. I want you to see them. Yeah. And I want you to tell me about each one of those David Boys. It... Now, oh, uh, so that was... That was a... <laughs> they love that. Yeah. That, that... Was, that was a character from a uh, sort of a, a non-rock <laughs> concept thing called uh -huh. Diamond Dogs. He was called Halloween Jack. Yeah. Yeah. And did, now, did you... And that one? Okay. Um, that was, well... I don't know. I've been living in New York for some time, so I, I was wearing a lot of Puerto Rican clothing. Yeah. But, David, David, you're inspired. I mean, there is no set costume. There is no set uh, feeling for the concert that the David that you will give as David Boy. Whatever uh, it is that you're influenced by at the moment, wherever you happen to be ethnically, that it tends know, to be like that. Yes, I, I'm. Uh, I'm easily saturated. I get. Uh, I'm, I'm very sort of fatty, very flirty. Yeah. I'm, I'm quite a rock fan. I get influenced by other bands, other artists, uh -huh. and, and I tend to sort of steal things from them. <laughs> and, and, uh, You're being very modest. No, no, not at all. steal no. things for you? I think that's one of the most important elements of rock and roll. Interestingly enough, some of the, the, you know, the moves today and the costume that you have on today, yeah. which isn't really a costume, yeah. I think of as being uh, the sort of thing that was from the 30s, really. Is well, that, is that yeah, the feeling of it? Yes, very the much. The music was. But there's a, a sort of a, a European wave happening, and mm -hmm. a lot of the sort of the, the stylizations. Are, uh, I've got a favorite songwriter and um, band in England called Roxy Music. It was a character with Brian Ferry. Yeah. Um, who I think is probably spearheading some, one, some of the best uh, music that's come out of England in years. Mm -hmm. We're uh, taking a, a, a lot of time talking. I'm dying. There's so many things I want to know about you. And I've got... <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> I've got Henry and Nancy over there, and they, they've got a bunch of questions they, they want to talk to you about, too. Yeah. Everybody wants to find out a lot more about David Boy. So we'll be back right after this with some... <laughs> Nancy? Yeah, baby. No, I, I just want your I just want your uh, honest reaction to the opening song David did. Didn't I mean didn't it's... Well I have never seen David perform in person before. Mm -hmm. And I love watching him. Yeah, he's beautiful to watch. Yeah. I love him. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna say no. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> oh they haven't made Yeah, no they haven't. Oh, mm -hmm. But I have a thing. I was brought up on Porter. And Gershwin, yes. and Rogers and Hart, you know. Hoagie Cohen. Uh, oh, well, yeah. And I'm afraid I'm, I'm stuck with them. But now we're back in fashion, all of us. Yeah. Oh. I mean, yeah. me whistling them, and they're That's being right. played, and That's uh, right. people like Manhattan transfer do songs from the forties. <laughs> What's happening. I was just saying to David that the costume, now this is the outfit that they wear uh, when they do the 30s outfit, the Manhattan transfer, they wear the wide right. Right. trousers and that sort of thing. And Fonzie, of course, is the idol of the 50s. He is what is known. Absolutely. <laughs> he's, the, he's the David Boy of Happy Days. I'm, I'm a great fan of, of Fonzie, and uh, a partic I have a lot of admiration for Henry as an actor. Yeah, well, so that's I. lovely. Yeah. Thank so you. I. I'm very flattered because I certainly can return the compliment. Well, you so. know, uh, in in everything that we do, in, in whether you're a singer or an actor or a dancer, that we talked about this backstage for a second. I just had a chance to to meet David. Concentration is of the essence. In the structure comes the freedom. And uh, whatever people see David as, mm -hmm. 
what the, the, the mind that goes on behind all of that. He is aware of every note that is played by every musician in his band. He is aware of every movement that his dancers make. He is in control of his aesthetic weight. You know, that's it's incredible. So interesting it thing about Henry here now. He started with a lovely, mild little television show that everybody was amused at and thought was charming. And it's one of the most successful shows on the air now. Mm. And everywhere you go, we had... Uh, well, one of the girls, both Laverne and Shirley on, and they said that they had gone to Milwaukee and followed you in there. And that the people, it's like with you, they scream, and thousands of people come to the airport, thousands of people crowd the hotel because they want to know, and you weren't even there, but they wanted to know what's the funds really like. And, and I could tell them, and I'm not going to. He's cool. Yeah, he's really cool. This is a, a nice, really sweet, gentle fella, and, and I, we've worked together uh, a, a large number of times. And now. it's my pleasure. No, but I, I wonder, you have more and more fans now, more yes. and more adulation. How do you handle it? How do you handle it? That's, that's a really good question. I spend a lot of time thinking, I have a, a theory that an actor can never be more than he is as a human being. His characters can be different, but his soul cannot. So if I don't get it together, you know, then um, and, and I start to get to think that I am more than I am. If I forget that I am Harry and Ilsa Winkler's son uh -huh. and I chose to do this, it's my profession. That cockiness will not only kill me as Henry, it will kill me as an artist. So the way people approach me is the way that I will um, relate to them back. If they come, I mean, they're telling me, I like what I, what you do with your life. Yeah. How, that's phenomenal. Do you find that fans want to know about you or Fonzie? Well, I, I started a national campaign as soon as I went on television that Henry Winkler was the reality and Fonzie is my fantasy. And now all the people know that, or a lot of the people know that my name is Henry and they, they want to find out about Henry too. I want to ask you, Nancy. Yes, now, Nancy is one of the few people, she bicycles from one television <laughs> show and, and starring on uh, Macmillan and wife and then she stars on Rhoda yes, and yes. she's in demand for about 15 other uh, projects that are steady projects I don't mean the kind of thing that will be a one-time shot mm. everybody there is a Nancy Walker part and that's been uh, harder to handle than the days when Nancy Walker said well uh, if I can get this part I'll be so happy right. I mean just glad to be alive right. I look back on those, those days of uh, with a little more energy than I have these days. <laughs> yeah, I don't doubt it. But uh, it's been a, a fantastic two years. It really mm -hmm. has. And it's uh, it was murderously tiring. But I was very grateful for them. And uh, this fall, we start our own show. Mm -hmm. Not we. I start my All own right. show. Right. Oh, well, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that really is such we'll a. They, they have lovely things they do over there at that yeah. place. They when the, someone emerges from that show and rightfully so, uh, they build a program around them right. and they surround them with the best writers and the best producers. You, it'll be great. Well, fingers yeah. crossed. I, I, David, you know you're you're a puzzle to a lot of people. We touched on it a little bit over there mm. because uh, there are a lot of David. Boys. Yeah. Uh, mm -mm. There's really only one. Uh, no. You know, here you're tonight, yes. Very, yeah. It, it, yeah. Well, there are a lot of shadows. Around. No, but, uh, but by that I mean, uh, for instance, you said you took that from that period and this from that period yeah. and this. You were influenced by this because you had been in New York and the Puerto Rican costume yeah. had fascinated you. Yeah. But uh, do you feel that this keeps you? with the times or way ahead of the times? Well, I, I started as a painter. Um, as an uh, artist? Yes. Um, uh, but I found I was a natural ham. I, I, I <laughs> hammed everything. You just wanted to be um, out in front. Um, for me, rock and roll was a, a superb way of, of um, releasing those, those kind of you know, excitements and one could adopt uh, any character at all. Um, and I found that rock and roll is, is probably one of the, the newest Western medias and it interested mm -hmm. me and I wanted to play around with it. And you, you had never sung before that time? You'd never fronted a band? You'd no, never I, I, I'm, I still act the songs rather than sing them. I, don't, I mm -hmm. interpret songs. And I, was, I thought, well, if uh, the French chanson but thing can, can, they, they can get away with sort of talking the songs, then I yeah, can get yeah. away with talking them. Yeah. All I need yes, is attention. Yeah. Uh, you said there were some things you wanted to change. 
about yourself. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, um, uh, it, it's the, the policy of being a self-invented man is that you sort of strip yourself down and and, mm -hmm. and decide what you don't like about yourself and what you won't admit about yourself and eventually f come face to face with it. Mm -hmm. And then you have to decide whether you're, you're going to try and change it or not. And, uh, and what didn't perpetually you like in that, you? in that, uh, um, the one thing I didn't like was being t uh, terribly shy, mm -hmm. an incredibly shy person. Um, and, uh, so I, I, I overcompensated. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought if I gave myself, um, an alarming kind of reputation, then I would have to learn to defend yeah. myself and, and therefore come out of myself, sort of. That's very interesting. Well, it was sort of, yes, it seems Because you'd think people logical. would sneak into being, uh, making people aware of them, but you said, if I'm aggressive, they're going to get mad at me and I'm going to have to defend them. Absolutely. That's very really interesting. All change comes from fire. <laughs> yeah. Two chemicals come together when there's yeah. fire under That's right. Yeah. Be right back. <laughs> Um, I, I just, I'd like to interrupt for a second, okay? Is that possible? <laughs> um, <laughs> Is that possible? Okay, yes. your heart desires. See, um, I get a, a lot of mail, and I've been, everybody asked me if there was a Fonzie t-shirt. See? Yeah. So I finally got the idea that if a lot of people want them, so I went to my godson's father, Donnie. Your my godson's son, father, it's Donnie. Godson's he's an he's an artist. Very complicated. And I it? asked him to design uh -huh. um, a T-shirt, a Fonzie T-shirt. This is so great. Yeah, it's the way it's <laughs> Sparing no expense on the wrapping. Yeah. I have here an old envelope. Uh, However, we have here. I would like on the air here for the uh, first time in history. I would like to give you the very first unveiling Fonzie T-shirt ever recorded in the history. <laughs> tell you that um, well, he designed the t-shirt, Donnie designed the t-shirt, and I made one correction, that the color on the back of the t-shirt will only be the color of 1,200 shirts, so only 1,200 people in this country will have one the color. Red, you the red, you mean? Um, if they write to uh, me at ABC. Okay. Yeah. Right. And then here, happy days. Happy days, ABC. yeah. ABC, okay. But I, that's, and then what I, happens after the 1200? After right. the 1200, that the fonz will become a different color. That's right. I love that idea. I, I would, I would like to have a T-shirt that only 1200 people own. <laughs> we have. I've got the first one though. You do. That's the first one. Yes. I like a T-shirt that you, you, 600 million people had, wouldn't you? Really? You would like a t You would like a T-shirt that 600 million yeah. people had. Well, you, the only place is so you have to go to China. David, I don't we think can, so. We can get huh? you. I don't think so. There are certain things that I would want that 600 million people million people would have. Yes. Um, like what? Uh, one of them, I w 600 million people should have peace of mind. Oh, but in a cool. t-shirt. <laughs> we have some quotations. We do. From, from uh, we do. David Boyd. And I uh. thought perhaps <laughs> every once in a while we do give interviews, all of us. I'll go and get the next song ready, sir. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, but we do give uh, interviews, and occasionally some of them are, are we're, we're putting the world on, and sometimes we're serious about it. Yes. But now I have met um, your lovely wife, Angela. Angela. Uh, I was going to tell you. And they have, they have a, a son called Zowie Bowie. They, <laughs> Zoe Bowie. So, uh, and I know that right now, Angela was going to be here today, but she's cooking dinner at yeah. home for you and, and uh, Alice Cooper and, uh, Ray and Ray Bradbury. Yeah. So, I mean, Angela is a, a the typical He's a sport. That's right. He's a good sport. Well, those but are great said, guests. Those are very inventive guests. Yeah. Wouldn't that be a fun party? I oh, like Alice right Cooper and Ray Bradbury. Yeah. Can I come? Alice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, can you cook? I can't cook, no. <laughs> okay. But I, I'm you terrific. Serve. No, I can bring a cake. All right. I'm very good at bringing cake. Do you do windows on Thursday? I do windows on Thursday. <laughs> Listen, the line that David has about marriage and about having married Angela is that I don't think we fell in love. I've never been in love, thank God. What do you mean by that? Um, 
I have a, a, a vast capacity to love. But the one time that I, I found that I was falling in love, it became obsessive to a point where the, 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 um, the object of that affection was becoming um, overblown. It was no longer a real thing. It was becoming my search for, for some kind of um, mythological feeling that, mm -hmm. that man is supposed to have and, uh, and probably the feeling that man eventually develops for an awareness of, of God. Um, you were endowing yes, uh, what, the person you love with those person, uh, This is the old thing about the person goes up on a pedestal. Yeah. Terrible almost for that person, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it, yeah. it's, it's even harder on the other yeah. person. But you feel that, that's, that, that you're having loved someone that heavily is a burden? In, in love. Uh, I in think love. They're, very strong. In they're, love. they're very different. I think they're very different indeed. Loving, Loving and somebody being... truly and, and, and uh, wholeheartedly and being in love are two yeah. very different conditions. Mm. I don't think being in love has anything to do with loving somebody. Mm. I see. Oh, I, I thought the, the two were rather synonymous. No, I don't think they are at all. You mean you can love large numbers of people, but you can be in love in an obsessive way that uh, obsessive, can drive yes. you out of your mind? Yes, room? and it, it may have and nothing, to do, nothing to do with that person. It's yeah. not care for the other person. No. It, it's to satisfy uh, something that needs to be fulfilled in one side. But, but you, you, don't you think you miss a lot by not feeling those passions, those angers? Yes, well, one feels the passions of, of loving somebody, I um, see. where you want to care for them and, and have them share. Your, and, and, but share their life right. and, and, and help them achieve what they want to achieve. Right. But when you're in Meaning love, you potential. want them to be perpetually with you. And, and I see. That's interesting. So, yeah. uh, it is, the, uh, it is the, the pure form of love, allowing the other person to nurture themselves yeah. into their potential. Well, then that's better than being in love. What he's saying is that in love is like is grabbing and holding and, and, and loving is like expanding. Absolutely. Yeah. The concept is, a great, uh, is, is greatly overused in the United States. We have greeting cards mm -hmm. where the couple is standing by the river and the sun is coming through the trees. <laughs> and what people forget is that the light is that way for only 10 minutes a day. And it is perpetrated on us to be that way all the time, which is not Impossible. the truth. Impossible. But it's not, it's not yeah. the truth. That's right. That, that love, That's loving is, is many wonderful moments. And if you pick out the, the, uh, the ones that, where yes. the sunlight isn't shining, Absolutely. they might outnumber the ones that are glorious. The companionship has to give yeah. full reign to all the other emotions that are part of the human makeup. Right. If it, if they have to be the real ones. Yes. Yeah. Did you have a quotation? I don't quote, which is very interesting. Now that I um, heard what you said before, you, um, we know you are an innovator. That is not uh, a written line. That is the truth. Um, people have uh, have taken your original style and tried to make it their own. You did, however, say at one time, <laughs> Dave. Diver, <laughs> diver, uh, <laughs> that um, if you were an original thinker, yeah. you would not be in rock and roll. Oh, absolutely. I'm not uh, an original. Now, rock and roll has been very good to you. Yes. Oh, yes. And you have originally I've been very made good to rock and roll. Absolutely. Yeah. You have you have made an original rock and roll style. Yes. You know, and I was I was wondering what you meant. Yeah, I, I am too. I'm yeah. Um, there, there's a, a writer in England called Colin Wilson, um, who very early on, um, among the new English writers in the fifties, became known as a, a translator of the, the the philosophers and the great thinkers of of the twentieth century, and was able to write them in such a way that everybody else could understand. The, the, those great minds mm -hmm. and he had a facility for understanding and then passing the information he was a translator um, he became a, a medium himself he was mm -hmm. a medium and I, I like to flatter myself I think that that's what I've been trying to do is that I, I was always um, totally uh, um, bedazzled by all the art forms of the 20th century mm -hmm. and, and uh, my interpretation comes out my way of those mm -hmm. art forms from, right. from expressionism to Dadaism and I I try and uh, break it down into a, um, some kind of simplistic that, that can and be passed can on. Even if the people. definition isn't understood, the feeling that, that I felt is passed on. Yes. You have been learning karate. <laughs> yes, I'm we afraid so. That's right. Now, I, I wanted to see you in action uh, because I think it's, it's fascinating. And, and it, I wondered why you went into karate. 
Well, a number of my friends in, in rock, before going on tour, had taken up karate to, mm. uh, as a form of exercise, and I thought that I would, might as well join in with what everybody else is doing and learn some. I, I had been studying mime when I was younger, so um, the, the, the two kinds of movement are very similar. Really? Yeah. Like, karate is a fast form of mime, where, where mime would walk like that. A karate man might use the same movement. Very similar movement. Well, we have your teacher here. <laughs> and he is going to come out here in a minute. He's a former U.S. grand champion. Whoa. What are we doing to do the bump? Oh, uh, anything. Oh, I my teacher bump. <laughs> this gentleman is, was a U.S. grand champion of karate. Uh, and uh, he is a very good friend of David's. David's instructor. And perhaps he can be helpful to all of us. I'd like to meet him. Mr. Dwayne Vaughn. What an entrance, Swain. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, is. is David a good student? Oh, yes, he is. One of my really? best. One Give of us best. a little sample of your style with him. Oh, okay. I, I've never uh, done anything before. Okay. okay. Never in your whole life, and we'll okay. move 14 feet. Guys, no, no, not that. I'm, I'm walking along a street, and a man uh, who's about seven or eight foot tall is mm -hmm. approaching me. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he's going to ask me for an autograph. Mm -hmm. what, what do I do when he... Okay, the first thing you know that he's coming as you already picked that up. Okay, the insight. So I know that. From here, man, is he, he, the first thing that the advantage that you have yes. as on your side is that he's coming at you. Yes. That's the first thing. So you're using all of whatever he's coming with against him. So if I were coming at you and I would choke you like so. I'd scream very loud. Yeah, you first. so choke. <laughs> So, I'm sure. Right from here. So the first thing you want to do is distract his mind from what he's doing here. You wouldn't fight him or try to break nothing or try to pull him loose or even try a block. Yes. All you have to do is from it distract his mind, hit him here in, a, in his groin. <laughs> and that way... <laughs> You know, kick him on his shit. Anything to distract his mind to release this. Yes. Right. Anything to release his... So once I'm you really make scared. your block... So once you know, you haven't made the block. So once you hit him here, his mind is going to hit here, then you will make your block. And uh -huh. then from here, you can come from here, hit the thumbs into the eyes, the knee into the groin, and then down to the head, and oh. elbow break. Hey, fabulous. Like so. That's fabulous. Um, that's I'll just have, I'll just have coffee to follow. <laughs> No, 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 I don't want it. No, why? <laughs> what is that? You don't understand. That is, nobody's in karate. No, it's very, very, that's a lot right. of people think that karate is that's... so hard and so dangerous, or if I take a lesson, I'm going to break a leg. If I take a lesson, I'm going to hurt something. It's not about that because the, if the teacher hurts you, how can he teach you? Yeah, but you have to learn Better how to basic. move so fast. Right. How do you do that? Well, the speed is, well, a lot of people think that, uh, well, especially in the martial arts, that it all comes from the hip and the power comes from the hip, but it's all from the mind. But the key to behind it is that relaxation gives you motion and motion gives you speed. Relaxation? You know, if I was going to do a punch and I was going to make tense up to make this punch, well, I wouldn't want to tense all of this up to punch. Going? Just right here, oh, just stand right. <laughs> From here, to tense up the move, boom, to make oh. a punch. I use all of my excess wasted force, which was no force at all, to get from one point to another uh -huh. and to execute a technique. Yeah. But if I relaxation, I have all the free, not freedom now of movement. So from here, I can move. Yes, that man is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Can move and then the focusing oh, point is on the point of contact of course all right let's show us show us what uh, classic karate looks like okay beautiful i like to perform a kata Please. called kanko all right Well, there's a lovely young lady now, uh, and 
Every so often it happens. A newcomer takes the music business by storm. And this is a young lady who has, um, but she's been exposed recently to a whirlwind of activity. Uh, her first single was a smash hit. She received two Grammy nominations. She was voted the NAACP Image Award as the best female vocalist. She, she just completed her first concert tour. And it was only seven months ago that she recorded her first album. And uh, I want you to hear her because, well, you have heard her, obviously. You brought many of her albums. But here she is to sing the title song from the album, Inseparable. Please welcome Natalie Cole. <laughs> That's seven five seven three five hundred. Well, I, I, I'm just so proud of you and so thrilled for you. And everybody's talking about Natalie Cole, and and, and they're not referring to this long musical uh, history behind her. They're just talking about Natalie Cole. The, the supreme singer today and we have a little surprise for you david can you reach that oh this is brilliant as much oh, as anything <laughs> that i've ever given to anybody before this is for one million dollars worth of an album inseparable oh my presentation Beautiful, but it keeps you busy. And poor little Natalie's oh. been traveling all over the country. Know, you know, and she didn't you. know this was due, and those lovely people at Capitol gave us a chance to present it to you today. I'm really glad. Do you see this? <laughs> <laughs> you show it to me. I'm going to take you it to bed it to with me. me. What, do you, what, do you, what do you think your dad, Nat, would have said about something like that? He, he had quite a few. But well, he had so knowing him, he'd probably be very cool. <laughs> oh, very proud. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, he didn't. He didn't think I was going to sing. Sparky uh, Tavares, who is with Nancy Wilson now, uh -huh. had told me that my father always said that I really don't think Sweetie's interested in music. You know, Sweetie's my nick uh -huh. nickname. You know, and uh, I'm telling you, it's a surprise to everyone. Isn't yeah. yeah. that nice? Oh, what a good surprise! Oh, it is. Yeah. Great feeling. I'm so happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she's standing in line there with all of us, with, with David. She says, oh, she says, I think she's got a crush on David. Oh, yeah. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. Just standing in line. it just so happened that at the airport uh, this morning, I picked up the Rolling Stone. And I was, in, as tired as I was, I was engrossed in the article, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad that you brought up the, the love concept mm -hmm. because it really intrigued me, you know. Yeah. It was interesting because I, I'm glad you made the separation of loving someone and being in love. Mm -hmm. There really is a difference. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Well, I, I want you to meet a lovely young lady who has quite a lot to say. Fascinating. She hasn't done too many talk shows either, David. And she's your co-star in The Man Who Fell to Earth. Oh, yeah, until just a few years ago, she never thought about becoming an actress, I suppose, in her wildest mm -hmm. dreams. Yet it, only her... to, it happens at such an extraordinary time. Yes. You know? It really does. And, of course, that's the best way. Mm -hmm. uh, but the interesting thing that happened was that in her second motion picture, she was nominated for an Academy Award. And I don't think that uh, means it's that she bad. will be, no, that isn't bad, <laughs> but I think she's and will be nominated and probably win many in the course of her career. Please welcome Miss Candy Clark. <laughs> Listen, I told him uh, that this was your first uh, real talk show that you've been on yes. and that you practiced, I heard. Is yes, that I true? Did. I did. How does anybody practice to go on a talk show? You sit. Well, you have to practice how to sit first. Oh, do you? Oh, I know. It's a problem. That's I right. guess right. did a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going on alone. No, <laughs> right. We surrounded you, though. I did. Uh, would you explain a little bit about the movie you two made together, either one of you? The Man Who Fell to Earth? Uh, right. 
<laughs> great <laughs> title. It needs an explanation. I'm not, I'm not trying. I'm not trying. <laughs> Candy, would you try? This is uh, a scene that takes place in about uh, the middle of the movie, and we've lived together for for an unstated period, maybe four or five years. We've been very close, mm -hmm. and he's become very wealthy and prominent and uh, revolutionizing Just about everything. everything, yeah. oil, mm -hmm. uh, uh, photography, everything. He's become super rich. And uh, in this scene, he's telling me that he's going to leave me. Well, it has been a wonderful day. And I have my Fonzie t-shirt, Henry. Happy days. Thank you for being here. Oh, with. it's a pleasure. I think you have a whole big future there as a, I mean, audience consultant on questions <laughs> and that sort of thing. Every Tuesday night, 8 o'clock on ABC, you can see Happy Days. And I'll wear my T-shirt in front of the television. Thank you. Nancy Walker is uh, as uh, Mildred and Melanin White, Rhoda's mother on Rhoda, and soon on Just Plain Nancy, her own series. That's exciting. Yes, it is. Thank you. Natalie Cole, Houston, and Ty is going to do a concert in Houston. This weekend and she has her solid gold album Disneyland, Disneyland. Isn't it? by the time this plays it'll be you'll be in history right? <laughs> inseparable and candy has a lovely movie with david bowie called man who fell to earth david bowie has an album called station to station <laughs> Marvelous moves the next time we got that, right? Yeah. 